Good day. We are going to look at total white blood cell counts. This is topic four or the fourth lecture series on the topic of white blood cells. I'm Dr. Penny Nansamba of Makerere University, COVAB. Objectives of the lecture on total white blood cell counts will be one, to outline the use of total white blood cell counts in diagnostics. Two, outline the procedure of conducting total white blood cell counts using the new bar counting chamber. Number three, to interpret total white blood cell counts in synergy with differential white blood cell counts. Total white blood cell counts using the Nuba counting chamber. The total white blood cell count is the total number of leukocytes in a given volume of blood. It's expressed in thousands per microliter. The total white blood cell counts can be done using manual methods or automated methods. The hemocytometer remains the most common method used for manually counting cells and most favored is the Nuba counting chamber. This is a picture of the equipment used to enumerate cells using the Nuba counting chamber and hemocytometers. In the center, we have the Nuba counting chamber, a white blood hemocytometer pipette. It has a white tip and a white bead inside the bulb. Hemocytometer cover slip. Red blood cell hemocytometer pipette. It has got a red tip and a red bead inside the bulb. Now let's have an overview of the new back counting chamber, especially the counting surfaces. Now the new back counting chamber is about the size of a glass slide, just a little thicker. It has counting surfaces etched or mounted on the surface there too. And they consist of square ruled areas. The two counting surfaces are separated by depression or moths in between them and on either side, giving them a characteristic H shape. There's a glass cover slip that's put on top of the new bar counting chamber. And when this is done, the counting surface is now at a depth of 0 0.1 millimeter when compared to the rest of the counting chamber. This value is important to note in the subsequent calculations that will give us the total white blood cell count. Let's look closer at the counting surface. As we said before, it's either etched or mounted on the surface of the Nuba counting chamber. It consists of a series of squares and that is the shape that we see under the times four magnification. There are four corner cells that are used for enumeration of white blood cells. Each corner square is further divided into 16 small squares and the white blood cells 
will be counted over these surfaces of the four corner squares and in each of those 16 four smaller squares. So leukocytes in the blood are very numerous. For accuracy, the blood is diluted and we usually consider a dilution of 1 in 20. Now we're going to look at dilution of blood for use in a white blood cell hemocytometer pipette during the enumeration of white blood cells. The picture in the left of the slide shows a white blood cell pipette. The dilution fluid that we use during total white blood cell counts, first of all, preserves the white blood cells, it stains them, and it lyses the red blood cells. This mixture is commonly called tax solution and its composition is given by the table. It consists of glacial acetic acid, gentian violet, sodium chloride, and distilled water. <coughs> Sorry. <coughs> Later on in the discussion, we shall discuss the function of each of the components of tax solution with regarding to preservation, staining, and lysing. The dilution factor is 1 in 20. One part blood, 19 parts dilution fluid, or 19 parts tax fluid. So, we are going to start with our white blood cell hemocytometer, pipette. We get our blood sample, agitate it to mix the cellular components with the serum, and then fill the white blood cell pipette up to the 0 0.5 mark. Remove this pipette from the blood sample, wipe the excess blood from the sides using tissue, place it in tax fluid, and fill this white blood hemocytometer pipette up to the 11 mark. Lastly, roll the pipette several times horizontally in the palms to allow the white bead mix the blood with the tax solution. Give it three minutes for lysis of the red blood cells. From here now, we are ready to charge our new bar counting chamber with this suspension of cells and tax fluid. So in Makere University, in the Central Diagnostic Lab, we have a modification of this method. Because multipating has been banned, there is a high risk of getting infected when highly contaminated specimens of blood are used. We are going to use Ependorf pipettes and macro dilution methods. So we are not going to use a white blood cell hemocytometer pipette. Instead, we are going to use an Ependorf pipette. We are going to pipette 190 microliters of tax fluid into a test tube and discard that pipette tip. Get the sample of whole blood in anticoagulant Agitate it to mix the cells with the plasma component. Aspirate 10 microliters of whole blood that's well agitated and deposit it into the test tube with the tax fluid. So we will have got our original 
dilution of 1 in 20. The mixture is gently agitated and left to settle for 3 minutes. When we're ready to charge the new accounting chamber, we agitate this mix this suspension of white blood cells in tax fluid again and use a clean pet tip to charge the new accounting chamber. In this slide, we are showing the charging of a new accounting chamber prior to enumeration of the white blood cells. The suspension of blood cells and tax fluid, which is either in a white blood cell hemocytometer pipette or a test tube, is agitated gently. If we are using a white blood cell pipette, discard the first drops because they contain more of diluting fluid and less of a suspension of cells. Now, both chambers of the new bar are filled by capillary action. Just allow the tip of the white blood cell pipette or the tip of the Ependorf pipette to touch the cover slip and it will fill by capillary action. Care should be taken not to overfill or underfill the counting chamber. In this slide, we are showing a counting chamber that has been properly filled on the top. None of the fluid has overflown into the malt. At the bottom, we are showing a poorly filled counting chamber. The top chamber is flooded with fluid flowing into the malt. The bottom chamber is underloaded and there are even air bubbles. Now next, we are going to focus on the microscope prior to enumeration of the white blood cells which are in the counting chamber. So we place the new bar chamber on the microscope stage. At times four objective, focus on the grid pattern and the white blood cell particles. When you've got a corner square, turn to times 10. This is what you're going to see under the microscope. And now count the white blood cells in each of the 16 squares found in this corner cell. Do it for the other remaining corner cells of the new bar counting chamber. Write down the amount of cells counted and we are going to use it subsequently in a calculation. The strategy for enumeration of the white blood cells, we have to be careful not to double count a single cell more than once. So to avoid the double counting, we are going to move strategically from the left side of the corner cell to the right side, counting the white blood cells in between. Then downwards, and now from the right side to the left side, and then downwards. Again, to avoid double counting, we are not going to count the cells touching the right and the bottom of the squares. We are going to count the cells touching the left and the top of the squares. All the cells in the center are counted also. Now that we've counted all the cells in all the four corner squares, we are going to use it in the subsequent calculation. The calculation involves the form following formula. The particles counted per volume. 
divided by the surface used for counting, the depth of the counting chamber, and the dilution. The, depth, the surface used for counting, or the four corner squares, is actually four millimeters squared. The counting chamber was at a depth of 0 0.1 millimeters, and our dilution was 1 in 20. So we are going to get the cells counted in all the four corner squares, divided by 4 times 0 0.1 times 0 0.2, or the cells counted times 10 times 20 divided by 4, and that gives us cells counted times 50 microliters. Now let's look at a summary of the principles we've observed and applied during the procedure of enumeration of the white blood cells. First of all, there was diluting the blood samples to ease counting, and this dilution was specific. The dilution factor of 1 in 20 was used. The tax solution used to dilute had a specific function. It lysed the red blood cells. And then we applied a specific formula to count the particles that we observed in the counting chamber. So let's apply our total white blood cell count in synergy with differential counts, which we had seen in the previous lecture, Series 3. Supposing at the end of our experiment, this individual had a total white blood cell count of 13.5 times 10 to the power 3. And previously, we had seen that the differential count gave us 65% neutrophils, 1% basophils, 2% eosinophils, 5% monocytes, and 30% lymphocytes. What's the absolute count for this individual? Let's take the neutrophils. The absolute count for the neutrophils will be 65% of the total white blood cells counted. And that is 8.7 to the power 3. Similarly, the absolute basophil count is 1% of the total white blood cells counted. Have something similar for eosinophils and monophils, monocytes, sorry, and lymphocytes. So we're going to look at our study questions. We are going to find out what is the function of each component of tax dilution fluid. What errors can occur in the process of pipetting and charging the counting chamber? These are going to give us errors in our output. What errors can occur during counting? Can blood from a chicken or amphibians be used in a new bar counting chamber? If so, why do you say so? And we are going to study some hemograms. We can refer to the practical manual for some of these answers. Would like to acknowledge the information used to compile this PowerPoint. Thank you.